my eyes. So this is not going to be an intentional ASMR video. Um, it's going to be more of a vlog type thing. It could end up being a sort of unintentional like ASMR if uh, you like kind of soft spoken or you just like to listen to people speak. Um, I have a thing, like I watch tarot videos for that, like it actually gives me ASMR, so hopefully this will work for somebody. If not, it serves another purpose as well. Um, I feel like my talent is like offering perspective. Like if somebody comes at me with a perspective um, and they're kind of caught in that, I'm really good at lighting up other options, if that makes sense. Hopefully it will after I get towards the content of this video. But first, uh, keeping with a little bit of ASMR, and because I've had people ask me what gum do I chew when I do like my gum chewing, because I don't do sugar and whatnot, so I'm going to show it. It's um, this stuff, this fry. It's a terrible glare. My goodness. Yeah, so the light's glaring on it. I can't. Let's fry. It's sweetened with xylitol, I think, so it actually tastes pretty good. And it doesn't have a bunch of crap in it. Yeah, it's just xylitol. It's actually protective for your teeth. Um, so I'm going to put a link in the description for this because, again, like I don't put ads on my videos because, especially if you're listening to this stuff to kind of relax and go to sleep, having one of those big ads play is just going to ruin the effect. So what I'm doing is making my own ads and doing it that way so that it can kind of blend into the video. So I will put the link in the description and it'll be an Amazon affiliate link. So anything that you buy through that link, I get like a percentage of at no extra cost to you. So there's that. Um, so on to the content. So the inspiration for this video is actually, um, I had a conversation recently with one of my friends who is going through a breakup type thing. And this is not the only friend I've had almost an identical conversation with. I've had this conversation with multiple people and um, it revolves around uh, like relationships and like when someone leaves a relationship and that other person is left with their emotions still attached, one of the things I frequently hear is, oh, but you know, I love them for them and they don't realize like how much I love them and you know, how deep my emotions go and how strong my emotions are. And, um, you know, basically it's just this idea of if only that person could understand how much I feel for them, what I'm willing to do for them, how much I'm willing to sacrifice, how strong my emotions are, then they would love me back. Or, you know, once they realize, you know, the kind of love I'm able to give, like, they will regret their decision to not be with me or to move on and be with someone else. And this is the perspective that I give to people that give me that perspective or that talk to me and, and say those types of things. Um, first of all, you have to kind of remember that not everybody is at the same level um, as far as, like, what they are capable of emotionally. You know, I mean, you can probably look at yourself and look at the love you experienced when you were younger versus the love that you experienced when you're older. It grows in depth. It also changes as you meet people, um, as you interact with people, like definitions of it change. Um, so that's one factor to take into account. But the other thing I wanted to point out is um, in one example in particular, the girl in question for this guy, the girl left the relationship and the guy did not want that to happen. Um, and he kind of has this attitude of, um, well, you're going to get out there and you're going to date other guys and you're going to realize what you're missing out. You're going to, you know, realize like how much I love you and what that means. And, you know, you basically saying that she takes for granted, like all the things that he does for her, um, the things he pays for the creature comforts, the attention he pays her, the attention he gives her, things that he does, um, that other guys aren't like that, and that she's going to start to notice that, and she's going to realize, like, how much love he really had for her. So, the problem with that is, 
it's like that that might be true but usually changes like that if you don't realize that kind of thing changes like that take a while you know it's not something that's going to happen in like a couple of weeks um secondly this is what i've noticed with people um different people need different levels of love and sometimes the love that you have to give is more than what that person needs and so what can happen is that the recipient of such a great love uh, becomes a little overwhelmed and it can cause stress you know because they feel like you know why is this person so devoted to me why does this person do so much for me um, because they can't feel the same and if they can't feel that same way for you maybe because they're not you know they don't have that ability yet they haven't learned how to love I thoroughly believe that there is a certain depth to love that has to be learned like it requires having lived a good bit and being in situations uh, experience things that show it to you that's another video but yeah so if if they can't feel that way and they see that you feel that way about them you know that can lead to a thought cycle of even on the subconscious level they may not, may not even be aware that this is what's making them feel bad about it but they can feel bad because you know subconsciously or maybe consciously they feel like a bad person because they can't match that level of intensity you know it feels like they don't want to feel like they're taking advantage of you or they don't want to feel like they owe you something and that can be what happens you know like I think that this girl probably felt like she wasn't good enough because she couldn't produce that same level of emotion for him and she probably felt like she should be able to and so she started to think that something was wrong with her and maybe subconsciously she was feeling stress from like guilt and not knowing where that guilt came from. I mean, I don't know how self-aware she is, but yeah, I mean, that's, that's something to think about, you know, with those mismatch levels of like emotions. And the thing you have to recognize, as in the case of my friend who had all this love to give, it's not that he isn't lovable by her. It's not that there's something lacking in him. It's not that there's anything he needs to be insecure about. It's just that she is not on that level emotionally. So for her, like she doesn't comprehend like that level of love. And I think at one point she did actually say that she didn't understand why he loved her as much as he did. And that's just more evidence of she's not on that level, you know, and she may never be on that level. You know, a lot of people, some people are deeper than others. And I'm not saying that as like a good or a bad thing. That's not a value judgment of like, oh, shallow is bad and, and deep is good. I'm not saying that at all. But I am saying that it makes a difference in a relationship where people are at different levels. If you're one of the deeper people that has like these deep emotions and a lot to give, you imagine it like a, a pitcher full of water and you've got like an entire gallon full of water that you can pour into somebody else because you're really deep and you're full of this emotion and this intensity. And then the person that you're with, their gallon of water or whatever is filled like halfway with concrete. So they can only hold half as much. So when you go to pour all of your water into theirs, it starts overflowing and it's too much. It's too much for them. And the thing is, it's not that they're bad. It's just that you just have more capacity than they do at this point. It could be that later on, you know, some of that concrete gets chipped away or emptied or whatever it is that's filling it up gets emptied. Or maybe they just go their whole life without ever emptying. Maybe they just go their whole life being half full and never, you know, changing that. And that's just different with different people. And so that's why I always say that communication is important, especially in relationships and stuff. Because, you know, those are the types of things that need to be talked about, like, how affectionate are you? Like, you know, what what is your definition of love? What do you think love is? Uh, just having those conversations, like talking about ex-boyfriends, ex-girlfriends, ex-relationships, 
I mean, if that makes you uncomfortable, just speaking in the theoretical, maybe, just to get that information to try to understand the other person and to understand what they want and to make sure that you're compatible before you do something like have kids together and then that breaks apart or before you move to another state or do some drastic action in life that has repercussions um, that you might regret later. So that's uh, part one of that. So part two of this issue is basically understanding that you can't force someone to see something. Um, everybody's got like different filters through which they view things, you know, and that filter is composed of like, you know, their experiences in life and the things that they value and the things that, you know, draw their attention. So um, one of the biggest things is like value systems. Um, different people have different value systems. Some people value physical appearance over everything. And then you have people that are like sapiosexual and that uh, value intelligence and uh, good conversation over all those other things. You have people that value finances, your stereotypical gold digger, that type of thing, which there are guys like that too, by the way. Um, so it's, it's a value system thing. And if somebody's main value is financial, and you've got all this other stuff to give, this love, this, you know, got the looks or whatever, um, it's not going to change the way that they look at you. It's not going to make them see your worth. Because to them, what is worthwhile is the money. And that's their value system. You know, I mean, they've got their goals in life or what's important to them, and maybe love isn't important to them. You know, maybe compatibility isn't important to them. Maybe connection isn't important to them. And I'm not advocating gold diggers and people to go after finances. I partially blame the world for that because if it was different, maybe, um, sorry, my chair pops. Um, but yeah, if the world was a little different, a little less money obsessed and uh, cutthroat, then maybe, you know, money wouldn't be such a big deal and then values would change so i mean that's a whole nother topic another conversation but you know likewise if somebody values intense connection in a relationship then you know it doesn't matter how much money you have it doesn't matter like that you have eight pack abs like nobody cares not nobody but the person whose value system is on that connection. If there's no connection, none of that stuff matters. Those are just like bonus elements. So what I'm getting at with this is like, you know, in these situations where, you know, you, your partner leaves and you feel like, well, you could change their mind if they somehow understood the depth of your emotion or your passion or how you felt or whatever, that may not be the case. And sometimes it's bad for you to sit there and torture yourself thinking of all the ways that you can try to make them understand, try to get them to see you. Because maybe they're not at that stage in their life where they can see you, where they can see your worth. Or maybe their value systems are off. Not necessarily off, it's just different, you know? I mean, so... In the case of, like, relationships that start and then, you know, a person leaves, sometimes value systems change. Sometimes people go into a relationship thinking, you know, this is the person that I want to be with, you know, I'm attracted to them, we have a connection. And then they start realizing like, oh, well, you know, maybe I just had a kid and I have to finish college and I don't have enough money to finish college. And so like the only way I can provide a better life for my kid is to find somebody that's financially stable and can take care of their own stuff and I can't do this you know in, in that situation it's like maybe their kid is their goal maybe that's their their big focus and you know the big thing that I notice with people that I end up in this conversation with is that they're all lovers they're all lovers love is the be-all end-all for these people 
and it kind of is that way for me too. So I intimately understand like this mindset, but I also understand the other mindsets, which goes back to the whole be giving perspective. Um, so yeah, you know, I get it, but not everybody has that value system where love is at the top. So, and that's, that's a really hard thing to, to realize and to deal with for people where love is at the top. So my whole goal is to hopefully like if, if you're one of these people that I'm talking about and have come into this situation before, I'm hoping to save you a lot of mental grief because if you can somehow like trick yourself cognitively into understanding this and not putting effort and time into somebody that does not appreciate it, that may not ever be able to appreciate it, maybe you can put it into bettering yourself and focusing on yourself so that you can be a better version of yourself so when someone comes along that does have the same value system as you, then it just, it's even better. So that's what I hope. And I, I struggle with this too. Trust me. I am uh, terrible at giving more of myself to people that, you know, they just have different values. They're not, they're not who I need to be with. And then you kind of trick yourself, uh, you give yourself excuses and rationalizations for like, oh, well, they're just having a hard time right now, or, you know, this, this will change in the future. But it, it's just rationalization. It's you not wanting to get away from that belief because it's painful. But sometimes you have to. And that's, that's about all I'm going to say for right now. I know this is like a shorter video than my usual ASMR, but this isn't, like I said, it's not intended to be an ASMR. If it works as background noise for you, and it gives you ASMR great, but it's not an intentional ASMR video. So with that being said, um, if you like this type of video, um, or if you have an issue that you want perspective on, um, I'm definitely down to like listen or you know respond or even make like a video response or make more of these type videos in this style or whatever. I mean, this is just me trying something new that hopefully will be beneficial to me and to other people. So just let me know if, uh, let me know if you did get ASMR from this. If this was like a relaxing thing to listen to, I do want feedback on that. Um, if not, um, if this helps you in some way, I'd love to, I'd love to know because that's, uh, that's a fulfilling thing for me. That does something for me. <laughs> so uh, until I think of another topic that I feel needs to be talked about or somebody gives me one, um, I'll go back to ASMR videos and I will talk to you guys next time.